Hello, friends. Welcome to the Career Guru Podcast. I am your host, Steve Yanofsky. What a glorious day it is to start your path on a new career. Doors are opening here at the Boston Career Institute even as we speak. And I'm here holding the key for you. So tune in, stay sharp, and enjoy yourself. This is going to be great. Hashtag Let's Career Up. Greetings, career gurus, aspiring career gurus all across the fruited plain. I am your career guru, your, your gentle yet firm host of the Career Guru Podcasts. Today, I wanted to stay within the same concept of uh, our last podcast, dealing with workplace success, stress management, dealing with procrastination, all those wonderful things that we talked about. But I received a few emails and I thought, gee, that sounds rather interesting to have a topic right now in between our uh, podcasts, uh, you know, dealing with these serious issues. I got a few emails that said, you know, Guru, we've been having some issues in the workplace uh, where people are insulted. Some people are insulted. Some people are offended. But certain insults are coming from people within the workplace and we really don't know how to properly uh, respond to them. And I thought to myself, gee, something to think about. And I thought about it. I said, this is this is great. This is great. This is a great topic for us to discuss right now. And so, you know, I'm sure you have all been, uh, how should I say, embroiled in some kind of a, a workplace incident where people say interesting things to you, like subtle, passive aggressive comments or criticism that are neither here nor there. And you just don't know which way to go. Up. Well, I had thought about this and I collected a few interesting yet generic workplace insults and how to properly respond to them without raising eyebrows or uh, getting into further conflict uh, with the people. So without further delay, let's get started with our number one contestant on the list of insults. You're lucky to even have this job. Now, a lot of people instantly get fired up about this. But as a wise man once said, that revenge is the dish best served cold. Remember, in our previous conversation, start off with a little bit of empathy. That'll keep you from, from setting that sometimes shortened fuse by... Uh, not having enough food or not having enough breaks at the workplace, that'll get that thing going like nobody's business. You blow up. But if you are experiencing empathy, you feel bad for that the person who is beginning to hurl insults at you. So start off with that. Don't instantly light that fuse. Don't let it go boom. Always look from the prison of appreciation, understanding, compassion, even love. Say, look at this person. They're, they're so... They're in so much pain, they're even hurling insults at me. And when you think of it in these terms, you are not going to blow up, so stay in control. So one of the things, this is like a job interview question type, right? Even when you want to say no, say yes. Even when you, when you want to really lunge at the person who is doing this to you, start off with this understanding and appreciation for their pain and you're going to be okay. So always start your response with things like, Yes, or I'm certain, or I appreciate. Now, what is it that we appreciate from the question that you are lucky to even have this job? Uh, isn't this a beaut? I appreciate the opportunity, and I work very hard every day to contribute to the team's success. Now, boom, right there. Let's try it one more time. I appreciate the opportunity and work very hard every day to contribute to the team's success. This is a drop the mic kind of a moment. This conversation is going no place fast, unless they have one more coming at you relatively quick. And the one that I think that's going to come up pretty quickly out of the corner is this uh, next one that I wrote down, right? That's not how I would have done it. Just, I'm sure you've heard this one before. Now, where do you go from here? Again, I find this so humorous, I can't even begin to tell you. Uh, as I was uh, as I was typing this up, I was uh, you know I, I found myself laughing, and uh, I think this is this is a great, very positive attitude to all of this. 
you know, I've been heard by this before. I, I've heard almost every single one of this. That's why they're on the list. Okay. But uh, from the vantage point of my experience uh, and the amount of daggers I have in my back from people who are, who I'm no longer involved with in the workplace, but I can tell you right now the right way to respond. Stay positive. Okay. Stay positive. Always stay positive. So, how do you block this from insulting or offending you? Well, here it goes. Here's, here, here's the actual insult one more time. That's not how I would have done it. And the answer is, well, how would you do it? And, but the, what's the tactful way of saying that? Well, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm always open to, prove, to, approve, uh, to improving my approach. Okay? So this is like, uh, this is great. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Questions on, on the interview are very similar to all of this. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm always open to new suggestions uh, or improving my approach. One of those things, a little humility and understanding of their pain. These people are obviously hurting. Otherwise, they wouldn't say bad things to you, now would they? People are nice, aren't they? I've heard this one before, right? This next one is good. You always take the easy route. You know, my my entire life, I, I've heard this said to me from my, from my kindergarten teachers and moving forward. And I never understood the value of taking the hard way when the easy way is available. I, I don't understand that a person needs to look for a complicated, more difficult route. Granted, you know, difficult paths often lead us to greatest education. But you know what? The quality of life, when something just goes smooth from A to Z, I can't begin to describe you. I have yet to experience a, a uh, smooth sailing from one place to another, but uh, I'm looking forward to one before I die. So you always take the easy way out or you always take the easy route. So where do you go from this piece right over here? It's a, obviously a dig calling you lazy or, or something similar to, to that. That's just a veiled way of saying calling you lazy. But it's not laziness that takes us to on an easy route. How about calling it something more efficient? Like I aim to find efficient solutions. But if you have a different perspective, I'm happy to discuss it. Something like that. But we aim not for ease, but for efficiency. And it only looks like it's the easy way. But in fact, it's a well-rehearsed and an efficient way to complete something. And that is your standpoint. I'm always eager to find efficient solutions. But if you have a suggestion, I'm open to a discussion. So you're both shooting them down, shutting them down, and making them eat some crow in the process. But at the end of the day, it's not going to lead to an argument because we're opening our way to discussion. Okay, that's all. People want to be heard. Here's another interesting dig. And again, they're on this list because I experienced them. I'm surprised they trusted you with this. That's a good one. There's an insult. Okay, again, you don't have to take any of these things lying down. You just don't have to get in their face and, you know, hurl an insult back at them. But this one is a notch higher. I'm surprised they trusted you with this task. They're both calling you incompetent and stupid. Where do we go from here? How do we find the positive approach to this answer? Because you can't answer anything negative with the negative, you have to counteract it with something positive. So where you find your strength is within you. So I suggest going it this way. I am confident in my abilities and appreciate the trust they have placed in me. Two positives. I trust myself and I trust my superiors who put me in this position. You don't have to go that. You and I, yeah. Who are you to tell me this? And you know, don't insult me. You know, it doesn't fly. Friends, turning something negative into positive is the key to restoring peace in this world. I am a firm believer that changing negative into positive will lead to a better world for all of us. Too many people out there 
not doing it. We're not nice to one another. Uh, even if we can disagree, we can still be nice with one another. Again, in order of what bothered me the most in my life, in my listing this. How about this one? I thought this would be done by now. Hey, you're slow. You're incompetent. See, there's a common thread here. There's a common thread. Look for these common threads. And again, negative into positive, negative into positive. I thought this would be done by now. Well, I thought you were wrong. No, no, no. That's not the answer. That's not the way to go. Where do we find the positive? Even if you are moving a little bit slower, it is because you wish to complete this task to standard. So when you answer in a way like, I'm making sure it's done thoroughly, quality is important to me. Pretty slick, right? I thought this would be done. By now, you're slow and incompetent. I'm making sure it's done thoroughly. I'm making sure it's going to be done thoroughly. Quality is important to me. I'm sure it'll go elsewhere. But usually, this tactful move to the side, not challenging their statements, you know, straight on, head on, and trying to refute a negative statement. Negative and negative make two negatives. We want to counteract negative with positive. Okay? Let's see. What else do I have here for you? Oh, how about this one? You seem really stressed out. Are you sure you can handle this? Again, again, a challenge to your competence to your mental state how do we this is a you know this is a dig masked in a statement of concern oh you gained a lot of weight is everything okay okay how about this so here's the question you seem really stressed out are you sure you can handle this one of the best ways to answer such a question is with a gratitude for their concern. You have to thank them because they're so concerned. It's too bad about the wrong things, but they're concerned. Thank you for your concern. I'm managing everything well, but I'll reach out to you if I need assistance. Thank you for your concern. All is good. I thank you. I'm managing everything well but I'll reach out to you if I need assistance. You acknowledge them, you thank them, okay? And at the same time, you tell them to go far, far away from you. And yet, remember, turning negative into positive is key in everything. It's key in everything. And oh, by the way, folks, please, by, by all means, email me your questions, especially in response to this video, thecareerguru at bostoncareer.org. You'll get an answer from me, and I'll be glad, certainly, to incorporate a lot of your thoughts and ideas, like I am right now, into our curriculum, if you will. All right. How about another good one? I didn't think you had it in you to finish this. Wow, what a compliment. What a compliment. So a dig and a compliment all in one, very similar to the previous question. Are you stressed out? I didn't think you had it in you, kid. I mean, you have to consider the source, but regardless, it's a question that requires an answer. And I got to tell you, if you change that into positive, instead of just keeping that negativity within you, you know, this negativity and the stuff that collects in you, it only harms the person who's harboring all of this. This stuff has to be let go. It doesn't hurt anyone else except you, constantly eating away at you. All of these positive dispensations or releases of these negative people out of your personal space, preventing them from affecting you further, is the greatest thing you can do for yourself. And you can laugh about it later on because, you know, they insulted you, you thanked them, made them, made their insult miss its aim completely. Because people who insult are looking for that, for that explosion within you, that, that power to start this argument that they've been aching to uh, to get into because of the emptiness and the darkness of their own life but you didn't fall for it so this is this is where the key is remember don't fall for it don't feed into negativity 
every time you join in that chorus of negative vibe, you're creating this abstract thought of uh, little dark angels. We call them little devils, right? Every time you're uh, casting negativity on something, you, you're feeding into the forces of darkness. Go the light side. I know you may not want to be there, but once you start going to the light side and creating those lovely angels in white with wings and stuff like that, rather than little pitchforks, sorry for that allegory, you know, but people understand it better when you, when they get the visual stay in the light. You will feel like a million bucks, a box. I promise you folks go light, never go to the dark side. They may tempt you with milk and cookies, you know, but don't go to the dark side. I didn't think you had it in you to finish. And you can say, I always aim to exceed expectations. Huh? What do you think about that? I always aim to exceed expectations. Mama Mia, that's great. I'm glad the work reflects that. Double compliment to myself. You tried to insult me. You didn't think I could do it, but I could, I did, and I always exceed expectations. Which, by the way, is an, is an interesting uh, life's lesson. Always under Promise and over deliver. You will always do better. If you tell people that you're going to do so much and you did 80%, they're just going to see that you failed. But if you promise to do 50% of the work and you completed 75% of the work, now you're the hero. So under promise and over deliver. That's related to this question. Let me see what else that I write for you. All right. That's not your area of expertise now, is it? That's not your area of expertise, is it? Can you just hear that? That smugness in the tone of voice. All right. Would be interesting for me to hear some of your feedback. I wish I could. But if you email some of your responses to these questions, oh, I'd love to see how you would handle the situation. Okay. And again, your ideas count just like now. Your ideas, your suggestions, and this topic today, I think we're doing great. Okay, so that's not your area of expertise, is it? So subtle. How would we do this? Again, transforming negative into positive. I enjoy learning new things and expanding my skill set. Look how easily we dodged that one. I enjoy learning. I'm expanding my skills. Double compliment. And then we can finish off by saying that we grow by stepping out of our comfort zones. You know, all these new language that we have floating about. I enjoy learning new things and expanding my skill set. We grow by stepping out of our comfort zones. So that dig is completely negated. And you didn't answer the same, no, it's not, but they told me to do it, so I'm doing it. Uh, no, no, not at all. Not at all. Transforming negative into positive. Got to do it. Remember, don't keep this inside of you. Once you answer these, you know, challenges of the darkness, you will feel much better and you are not going to retain this negativity anywhere, anyhow. How about this one? I promise you, I'm not going to torture you too long. I just have two more questions. I stick to that number 10, which seems to work for everybody. All right, let's try this one. Did you mean to do it that way? Or did you mean to do it this way? I mean, obviously casting aspersions on the completed project said, oh, gee, that didn't come out well, now did it? Did you do this intentionally or was this a fluke? No, no. Stand behind your work. Yes, that was intentional, but... I'm open to any suggestions that you may have. How about you, smarty pants? What are you going to do? Why don't you tell me what to do? And let's, let's discuss this further, right? Keep the dialogue going. They're not going to make any suggestions. They're out there just raising hay. Don't fall for it. Don't go to the dark side. Well, let's close out our top 10 picks with this one. You're too sensitive about everything. You're too sensitive about everything. 
they are insulting your intelligence and telling you that you are thinking impulsively. It's not a, a, a simple question to answer. It's, it is a very poignant attack. Sometimes people misinterpret your communications as being upset, and they always launch into this saying that you're upset, you're distraught, you're not thinking clearly. That will be the implication. So sometimes and every time people will tend, to, people like that will tend to use anything and everything you say against you. But you need to convey to them that you believe that clear communication and respecting each other's feelings. If something is unclear, we can talk through it. It's expressing to people this, this is not a feeling. You know, when people said, what are you going to do about uh, climate change? And the person starts saying, I feel. See, that kind of negates anything that they're going to say because you need to say that you think or that you believe. So when you're talking about something so vague and yet striking against you, you're too sensitive about everything. And I know you've heard this. I know I've heard this. That's why it's here. It is important to begin your question by either saying that I know, I think, or I believe. Believe is a wonderful word. When people misinterpret what you meant by your communication and they claim that you are a too sensitive of a person, you need to start with the words that instantly refute that assertion that you are not a thinking rather a feeling person. So when you say that I believe in clear communication and respecting each other's feelings is a complete negation of this question because you believe, you believe in clear communication and respect, which is what we're saying here. If something is unclear, hey, let's discuss this further. And that's it. And this party is going nowhere. I'm going to end it here, my friends, and I really look forward to your comments. I really want to hear what you think about this and what you've been told and how you have been insulted uh, in your workplace. Okay? Well, and on that note, I wish everyone the most amazing week uh, and with blessings and revealed blessings for you and for your family. This is the Career Guru. Signing off, stay on the light side. Well, friends and aspiring career gurus, this was fun. Thank you for tuning in. I feel enlightened. I feel empowered. And I'm feeling grateful that we spend time with you. For more information about Boston Career Institute, please visit our website, bostoncareer.org. Boston Career Institute has three campuses located in Brookline, Massachusetts, Malden, Massachusetts, and Lowell, Massachusetts. Call our toll-free number 888-383-6058. For questions, comments, and or information about our podcast, email me at thecareerguru at bostoncareer.org. The Career Guru podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our website, bostoncareer.org, or wherever you stream your podcast. Subscribe, stream, rate, and review our shows. Your rating and reviews help our show reach new audiences. Produced by PodPro Entertainment, the Career Guru lives within a network of podcasts located at podproentertainment.com. Hashtag the new radio. Looking forward to seeing you soon. All the best to you. My name is Steve Yadovsky. I am the Career Guru. May God bless you. Hashtag let's career up.